Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the structure of skeletal muscle fibres. This includes the structure of myofibrils and the arrangement of actin and myosin. OK, I'm showing you here the microscopic structure of skeletal muscle. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that skeletal muscle consists of long fibres. These fibres are formed when embryonic muscle cells fuse or join together. Fusing cells together means that we've eliminated junctions between adjacent cells, and these junctions would have resulted in weak points in the muscle. So because muscle fibres are formed from many cells fused together, muscle fibres are much longer than normal cells. Notice that skeletal muscle fibres have a striped or banded appearance. We'll be looking at why muscle fibres appear banded later in the video. I'm showing you here a diagram of a muscle fibre. Muscle fibres are surrounded by a plasma membrane which scientists call the sarcolemma. The sarcolemma contains infoldings called transverse or T-tubules, which are not shown in this diagram. T-tubules play a role in muscle contraction, and we'll see more about T-tubules in the video on the neuromuscular junction. Muscle fibres contain cytoplasm, which is called the sarcoplasm, and within the sarcoplasm we find multiple nuclei. And that makes sense, as the muscle fibre was formed from multiple cells fusing together. We also find a large number of mitochondria, which provide the ATP needed for muscle contraction. The sarcoplasm also contains a modified endoplasmic reticulum. Scientists call this the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And again, we'll see more about that in the video on the neuromuscular junction. OK, now within the muscle fibre, we find a large number of organelles called myofibrils. And myofibrils are the part of the muscle fibre where contraction takes place. So let's take a closer look at the structure of myofibrils. Now I should point out that this may seem complicated and you might need to re-watch this section a couple of times. Myofibrils are shaped like a cylinder and they're lined up so they're parallel with each other. This means that when the myofibrils all contract or shorten, they all contract in the same direction. And this means that the effects of each myofibril contracting add together. Myofibrils consist of two main kinds of proteins, which are called myosin and actin. These proteins are arranged to form strands, which scientists call filaments. Myosin consists of rod-like fibres with head groups that point outwards and myosin forms thick filaments. Actin consists of two strands which are twisted around each other into a helical structure, and actin forms thin filaments. Now, it's important that you learn which protein forms which type of filament. The way to learn it is that myosin has more letters than actin. So I think of myosin as a thicker word and actin as a thinner word. Now I should point out that other proteins are also found in muscle, and we'll be seeing those when we look at how muscles contract in a later video. I'm showing you here how the myosin and actin filaments fit together. I'm showing the thick myosin filaments in purple, and the thin actin filaments in brown. Bear in mind that this only shows a small part of the myofibril. The myofibril actually extends out in both directions. As you can see, the thick and thin filaments fit between each other in a regular pattern. OK, now earlier in the video we saw that muscle fibres have a striped or banded appearance, and I'm showing you that here. This banded pattern is due to the arrangement of thick and thin protein filaments. Notice that we have dark bands and we have light bands. We also have a very fine line running down the centre of each light band. Scientists call this fine line the Z line. So let's go back to the previous diagram and look at these in more detail. The light bands are where we only have thin actin filaments, so this region appears light. Sometimes the light bands are also called isotropic or I bands. The dark bands are where we have thick myosin filaments, so this region appears dark. The dark bands are also called the anisotropic or A bands. Notice that the edges of the dark bands are especially dark. That's where the actin and myosin filaments overlap. In the centre of each dark band, we have a slightly lighter region where there's only myosin. 
This is called the H zone. And in the center of each light band, we have the Z line, which we saw earlier. The Z line is where the actin filaments are connected. The region between one Z line and the next Z line is called a sarcomere. OK, now when a muscle fibre contracts, the filaments slide together. And we'll be looking at how that happens in the video on the sliding filament mechanism. Now, you need to be able to describe how the banding pattern changes during muscle contraction. The top diagram shows the uncontracted muscle, and the bottom diagram shows the muscle when it's contracted. Now, the first key idea you need to learn is that during contraction, the sarcomere shortens. And remember that the sarcomere is from one Z line to the next Z line. I'm now showing you the dark band, the light bands, and the H zone. Notice that the length of the dark band does not change during contraction. That's because the dark band represents the thick myosin filaments, and they have not changed. However, in the center of the dark band, the H zone becomes narrower. Remember that the H zone contains only myosin with no overlapping actin. During contraction, the filaments slide together, so there's now more overlap between the actin and the myosin, and that makes the H zone narrower. The light bands also become narrower. Remember that the light bands only contain actin with no overlapping myosin. So again, as the filaments slide together, the light bands narrow. In the next video, we look at how the nervous system connects to muscles. This is called the neuromuscular junction.